Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to this presentation, which is part five of a seven part series of tutorials in computer structured programming using C and Pascal. This is section three of four in the topic program development and design. My name is Memendi M, or you can simply call me Emily Swap. In this tutorial, I'll discuss the following structure and programming design concepts, monolithic design, top-down design, bottom-up design, modular design, and the control flow structure design. The main structured programming design concepts are, just as I have said, monolithic design, top-down design, bottom-up design, modular design, and control flow structure design. Let's look at monolithic design. This is an informalized approach to programming. A program consists of a sequence of individual instructions that are executed one after the other. This results to a one massive program consisting of several thousands of lines of code that are grouped in any logical way. It refers to large and displayed approach. It has no advantages. It is a total program approach where all the subprograms are planned together as a logical application. It has a conventional approach, which is unsystematic in treatment, and it can be unworldly, but it is common among amateur programmers. It is only unstructured methods. The main disadvantages of this design are, number one, maintaining such a program is time consuming and expensive since changing even one line of code would affect the entire program. Secondly, any conditional branching forces the program control to jump back and forth, creating tangled loops that we call spaghetti loops, which make it very hard to even trace errors in it or even understand the functionalities of that program. The second design is modular design. It refers to development of a program in modular basis. Under this method, the program is broken down into more manageable units. Each unit represents a major uniquely identifiable component of a program that is called a module that can be written separately, almost identifiable of others, but in a coordinated basis. This approach facilitates or facilitates the debugging that is detecting of errors and the maintenance of the program. It also enables a large program to be developed in a shorter time by a team of programmers, thus making the work easier or making the workload lighter. The module can be used in housekeeping, input, processing, and output functions. Program modules form a group of source codes which translates into subprograms or subroutines such as procedures or functions. Modular programming has the following advantages. Number one, a program can be developed into separate subprograms called modules. Number two, it facilitates the development of a program by a team of programmers. Number three, system modules can be written and tested independently. Number four, it makes debugging of programs a lot easier because errors are localized in modules. Number five, programs can be developed in a shorter time. Number six, modules once compiled 
can be imported and exported to other programs written in the same language or in different languages. The third type of design is called top-down design. This is the process of breaking down a large program into smaller and manageable components. This process continues at each level until there is sufficient detail to allow the coding stage to proceed. An outline or overview of the program is designed first, showing the main tasks or components of the program and the order in which they are going to be executed. The process of reducing components into sequences of smaller components is referred to as stepwise refinement, and it forms the basis of structured programming. Top-down approach allows a program to be designed methodically by providing a complete definition of the program at each level of complexity. First, the problem statement is specified and the design is subsequently carried out using different techniques such as structure charts, pseudocodes, and flowcharts. Each subprogram is then refined in yet greater detail, sometimes in many additional subprogram levels, until the entire specification is reduced to base elements. A top-down model is often specified with the assistance of what we call black boxes that make it easier to manipulate. However, black boxes may fail to elucidate elementary mechanisms or be detailed enough to realistically validate the model. In a top-down design, macro structures of many programs are written first and the lower and lower sub programs are written in stepwise structured modular decomposition as follows. If, for example, you have your main program being, for example, compute institutional results, then you begin with the main program. So in other words, if you are coding, instead of starting with the smaller details, of the specific um, instructions, you first of all develop the main body, the main, main program, the main program. In my subsequent presentations, I'm going to show you what we call the main program, what we call the block, and the specific sections or modules. But you first of all begin with the main program. What is the main problem? Like students result computation. And then you break that down into smaller sub-programs. For example, you can break it into two sub-programs. For example, for you to be able to identify the results, there must be owners. So you can have one sub-program being for students' details entry. Student details entry. That is one sub-program. The next sub-program can be student's scores entry. So we have the main program, student's result tabulation. We break it down into two sub-programs. One sub-program being a student details entry. The other sub-program being a student's scores entry. So the first sub-program will be to capture the student's details. The second sub-program will be for the purposes of capturing each student's results or scores. Then for the sub-program for student details entry, you can still break it down into two. So we have sub-programs, two sub-programs, under the sub-program on student details entry. One sub-program can be to capture their parents' details. Because on any during admission, for example, students will have contacted persons or their guardians or parents who they are registered under, so that in case of any issues, they can be consulted. So we can separate the details for the student and the details for his or her parents. So we have first our program being 
you can call it like student parent or the parent details, parent details. The second sub-program can be students' personal details. So the first sub-program can be to capture their parent details, their names and their contacts. The second sub-program is for the specific student detail, the name of the student, the age, the class, etc. Then under the sub-program for students' course entry or subject course entry, we can break it down now into specific subjects. For example, we can break it down into two. For example, you can have one sub-program being for a student's scores in mathematics. That is mathematics scores, under which we can have the CATS, continuous assessment tests, uh, the end of term exams, ETC. Then we can have the second one being for another subject, like English, English students' performance. So in other words, you begin with the overall program and then you break it down, down once, all the way to the smallest part where you now deal with the specific details at the very lowest level. So that's what we are calling the top down design. Then we have what we call the bottom up design. In bottom up design, the lower sub programs are coded, tested, and debugged. In other words, this is the opposite of the top down. Instead of beginning from top, you now begin from the lowest parts. So you begin coding those smaller, the very lowest sub programs. And then you continue linking them or merging them together up to the main program. So they are then linked together from the main program. It is mostly used in new systems. It saves time that would have been wasted and helps to avoid the costly problems of interfacing. Emphatically, the bottom-up development tends to run into interface problems, especially when you have to put together program system modules that have been written by different teams or programmers. It has three key problems. Number one, they tend to be faulty, one after the other. They tend to involve more changes to existing code due to logic bugs in that one error in the calculation is carried on to another part of the program. That's the second problem. And the third problem is interface bugs are experienced after most of the task is over. It is developed as follows. So this is the just the reverse of the top, bottom, or top-down approach. So here you begin, for example, if I was to use the same context or the same example I've used, you can have the first sub-program being the one that is handling the parent details, capturing parent details. Then the second sub-program is capturing student details. And then the two are combined together to form student details entry as a sub-program. Then on the side of the max entry, you begin with developing a module for capturing the scores, for example, in English. And then the second sub-program for capturing all the scores in, for example, mathematics. So you have sub-program for English and sub-program for mathematics. The two are linked together or are merged together to form another bigger sub-program composed of two sub-programs. And this sub-program can be students' scores entry or students' performance. And then, the students entry sub program, the students details entry sub program, and the students scores entry sub program are then merged or combined together, then form the main program, which we are calling rolling 
program. So, this is just the reverse of the top down uh, design. The fifth design is control flow structure design. This is the order in which the individual statements, instructions, or functions cause of an imperative or a declarative program are executed or evaluated. With an imperative programming language, a control flow statement is a statement whose execution results in a choice being made as to which of the two or more paths should be followed. Therefore, the method of developing a program by including statements that control the flow of instructions is referred to as control flow structure design. The kinds of control flow statements supported by different languages vary, but can be categorized by their effect as continuation at a different statement, that is unconditional, branch, or dump. Then we have executing a set of statements only if a certain condition is met. We call that choice, that is conditional branching. Then we have executing a set of statements zero or more times until some condition is met, that is forming a loop. That is the same as conditional branch. Number four is executing a set of distant statements after which the flow of control usually returns the subroutines, carotines, and the continuations. Number five is stopping the program, preventing any further execution or what we call an unconditional halt. With that, we have come to the end of section three. Continued section four of four in this topic, that is part six, so that we can get a complete clear understanding of program development and design topic. Congratulations for learning section three or four of the topic, program development and design. You can also access sections one to four of this topic, other topics in the computer structure and programming unit, as well as other computer or ICT videos by clicking or tapping on MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel below this video. You can also visit MLSWAP Life Skills YouTube channel for free life skills motivational and inspirational sources. To sub subscribe to this channel, tap on the subscribe button below this video in YouTube if it's not currently reading as subscribed. For any further correspondence, kindly write it to us through the email mlswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Let's meet in part six.